Hi, everyone. My name is Kathy Fromm, and I am your educator today here on the Who's Front of Viking Facebook and YouTube channel page. We're going to talk about some um, home decor sewing for fall. And the project I have for you today is a fun, reversible uh, placemat or table runner that you can make. You can truly make it any size that you'd like. So come on in, get settled, um, share with us where you're at, um, where you're from rather. And I don't know about you, but I live in Northeast Ohio and typically by this time in October, you know, we have some cooler weather. Well, we're having a very summery day today. So it's about 80 degrees here, um, but our leaves are changing and I too truly love the fall season. So share where you're at um, and um, if you have any great um, favorite fall sewing things that you like to do, you might be preparing for some costumes or for some uh, uh, celebration dinners with family, some Thanksgivings and, and things like that. So feel free to share what you're working on and where you're from. So um, I think we've got quite a few people with us now. Um, again, thanks for joining. My name is Kathy Frum, and this is recorded so you can go back if you miss part of it, uh, go back and watch again on either our Facebook channel or our YouTube channel. So, all right, let me show you our project here before I move over to the machines. Um, this size is our placemat size. It's a little easier to handle on camera for you. And so this is a reversible placemat. And it's not just two pieces of fabric with batting in it. It actually is made, let me turn this for you. It's sewn together in a quilt. Oops, let me get your camera right. There you go. Um, in a quilt as you go fashion. So it goes together fairly quickly. And you don't have to be restricted to any particular measurements. You can make up your own as you go or you can be um, very planned in your project. So if you look at my fall side, you see that I use the same fabrics on the sides, each side and then top and bottom, or you could rotate them around more in a log cabin fashion, um, really doesn't make any difference at all. You can also make this same project on the serger and I have a, um, a non-fall sample for you on the serger. This one is like a spring summer um, little table mat. Just It's just a square, so you can use it on the center of a table or maybe on a side table, a coffee table, or a dresser. But this is um, along the same principles as a quilt as you go project. And here's the other side, some summer roses for you. And then this particular one has some addition of some serger cover stitch technique. Um, I'm not going to be showing you this part today, but I wanted to show you that the concept can be done on both machines. And I do have my Amber Air S600 set up for you. We'll do a little serging of some of our construction steps on that serger. So let me put this someplace. Oh, we'll just put it right here for now. So first off, what you need are some fabrics and you want to pick a color um, palette that's pleasing to you. It's your project. You can make it however, um, however you'd like it to be. And so I have some different Halloween fabrics here. I have some purples and some spider web, some haunted trees. And then I also have um, some pumpkins and some more traditional calming fall way. Uh, you can combine your holidays. If, if you really like Halloween and you don't, you can't settle on one set of fabrics, make both sides Halloween. Just, you know, change it up. You could do um, Christmas and winter together, spring and summer, um, Easter and spring, or, you know, your holiday choosing. Um, you can even just make this for your everyday decor to match your everyday decor. So the first thing we're going to need after fabrics is we're going to need to create this centerpiece. And let's show you the candy corn side. 
So here my centerpiece is the candy corn. All right, on this side. On this side, it's just a little country fall print. So I have some fabrics here. I have just a plaid fabric. And then I have a nice um, dotted fabric to use. And then for every piece of fabric, you're going to need, for every two pieces of fabric, I should say, you're going to need a piece of batting. Now, a low loft batting um, works really well, such as the, the warm and natural or the warm and white, any of the, um, like the thermal fleece, the thinner type of batting I find works pretty well for it. And we are going to sandwich our batting between our two fabrics. So let's use our cornucopia and our dots together. And then we have the option of pinning or clipping. Now, some people prefer our little plastic clips. I've come to really like these a lot. So I'm just going to do some pinning or clipping around. I will caution you if you're going to be um, doing this on your serger, I think it'll show up better on this side. I would advise not, do not put your pins sticking out like this when you go to surge this, because then you will surge over them and that can cause some serious damage on your serger blades. You might even break a needle, so you don't want that. So instead, I like to pin, try to get that into focus for you there, so that my pins are out of the way. I'm gonna surge up here and here, if I was doing this on the serger, I want them out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to put one more clip in here and then I'm going to switch cameras and take you over to my sewing machine. Okay, so I have this pinned and clipped together. This is going to be my center of my placemat. So let me come over. It can be a table runner too. It it's all depends on how big you make it. So... Let's see here. Let me get you on the right machine. Here we are. We're over at my Designer Epic 2 today. Um, this is a project that, you know, don't be afraid of this project. This is something that a beginner sewer could do. Um, it does not have to be, whoops, almost knocked the camera over, folks. Sorry about that. Um, it does not have to be anything terribly fancy as far as sewing machines. We can um, make this uh, work for any sewing machine. Sorry, guys, I just have to get myself repositioned. Alrighty, so I'm over at my machine and I am set up for sewing. However, I want to take a moment to, to let you know that you could... Um, really do some embellishment um, with your embroidery machine if you have one and do a centerpiece as I've done here with um, a fall pumpkin. This is one of our newest designs in the MySonet library. I believe it released last week. You know, every week on MySonet library, we release a set of new designs that you can purchase or you can use if you have a library subscription. Um, if you purchase them, they're yours to keep forever. So um, I really like to purchase my favorite designs. So I stitch this on a piece of cork. And then for the other side, this one I have a piece of Christmas fabric. I chose a focus print. So that we all have those prints in our stash that we buy because we just love the print. But often they're so big, we just can't um, use them how we thought. So using a piece of that in a focal point um, is a nice, a nice way to use that. So now talking about hooping cork or embroidery on cork, it's actually very, very easy to embroider on cork. My favorite thing to use is to use my metal hoop. Okay. And for my stabilizer, I have our... Uh, our lightweight tacky stabilizer. It has one side that's tacky. We also um, sell a Husqvarna Viking stabilizer that has a paper 
that you can peel off either will work very well for this type of project. So as you can see here on my hoop, I just have that stabilizer on stuck to the back of my hoop. Okay. And I've already stitched another little Christmas piece I can use for a focal point. I'm just doing my little snowflakes. So, so those are a couple things um, that are very helpful. They make quick work of your embroidery by using that metal hoop um, and hard to hoop fabrics such as cork or vinyl. You wouldn't want to leave any hoop marks behind with those fabrics. All right. So let me just move that hoop out of our way. All right. And I have my machine set up for sewing today. Let me make sure I am over into sewing. And it's just giving me a little pop-up message saying um, to make sure if I use a decorative stitch um, that I have the proper foot on. I'm going to select the straight stitch from my menu and just put on my quarter inch piecing foot. Now, I'm, I just have my regular quarter inch piecing foot on, just my metal one. However, we make this foot in a number of different um, variations. We have a foot that has a guide on the outside of it that you might prefer to use, or and we even have a clear foot. So choice is yours, whatever works best for you. So our first sewing step here is to just um, choose a straight stitch. And we're going to hold these two layers together. You know, this is a, not a fully necessary step, but I find it just gives me a little more security to go ahead and stitch around the outside edge of my uh, center fabric. So, um, okay, let's go ahead and start. And I'm not sewing a true quarter inch. I am simply sewing a scant quarter inch. I'm just holding things together here. So I have my pin in upside down on the wrong side and it's catching. My apologies, everyone. I pinned on one side and flipped on the other. Well, you know what they say about live TV. You know, if it's going to happen, it'll happen. So let me just get that pin, other pin out of the way and keep going. And I'm not going to go all the way around for you today. Just kind of do a little bit in our different sides. And I could certainly make this a longer stitch because again, it's not something that is crucial to our construction. All righty. Yeah. Let me just grab our next fabrics. I have a feeling something might end up on the floor here, but it's okay. All right. Feel free to ask any questions you might have as we go through it. Um, let's see here. Let me just check here. Uh, will there be a pattern with written instructions? Well, you know, there might be in the future. As of right now, this is just something I kind of made up. Um, but there are there are quite a few different uh, quilt as you go techniques. And <clears throat> excuse me. And um, there may be something very similar to this that is already in existence. But maybe Amy can take a note for me that we'd like a. A pattern for it later. All right. So we have, make sure you can still see me, not see me, but see the machine. So we have our centerpiece, and then I have a piece of fabric for my fall side, and then I have a piece of fabric for my Halloween side. And I have 
it's too stuck together, a strip of batting. So I cut my strips at, um, my fabric is cut at two and a half inches and my batting is cut just skinny of two and a half. It's like two and a quarter plus a little bit. I'm just, I just was a little bit generous there with, with my batting, but I wanted it a little bit less than the strip because it doesn't need to be excessive. It doesn't need to stick out beyond it. So I want to make sure that I create a sandwich with my two fabrics. Make sure you can see this. So I'm creating a sandwich with my two strips of fabrics. They need to be right sides together. And I want to make sure that the Halloween print is on the black dot side because that's going to be um, my Halloween side. And I think for ease of doing this on camera, I'm going to go ahead and put just a clip at either end. Now I am extending um, my piece um, a little bit because I have a selvage on the other side. So I'm going to trim that selvage down before you, before we get going here. So we don't have to deal with that. So I've held my first side together and then I'm going to take my scissor and just trim away. I really like those little, these little applique scissors. That's what they're for, but boy, I love them for a lot of other things. So on my fall side, I want to put right sides together. And I did trim the selvage off so that I have a nice finish. And I'm going to clip this fabric in place. Okay. And I'll trim this off. Now, if you were making a whole set of things and you wanted to determine your size ahead of time, by all means. You can cut your strips ahead of time. I like to use up my scraps. So I like to just, um, you know, cut my strips in and see how far I can go. And my next step is to place my batting piece on top. So it doesn't matter if the batting goes underneath or on top, but I like to sew with it on top. And again, let me trim my strip off. All right. Set those aside because they'll end up on the floor. So just to review, um, I have one strip right sides together to side one, which I'm going to call my fall side, and my Halloween side, and my batting side. Okay, so I have those all clipped together. And I'm going to use a straight stitch. And this time I'm going to use a true quarter inch seam allowance. And I do have my IDF engaged. So I'm going to go ahead and sew. And I know you've heard other educators say this. When we're sewing on camera, we are so not in front of our needles. <laughs> we're like off to the side or we're standing up. So um, forgive us if we are not um, maybe quite uh, sewing as straight as you think we should. Okay. So then we're going to open up our piece and kind of give it a finger press. All right. And I like to do that on both sides to build that out. So I, I think I saw a question pop up. Let me see. Oh, the question was, why um, do I want my batting a little smaller than my fabric strips? That's simply to reduce, reduce the bulk in the seams. So if I don't have quite as much batting, then it's not as bulky. So, oops, okay. All right, so that's added to one side. And now we simply repeat for the other side. Um, making sure once again that I put fall side to fall side. And I will keep consistent with on um, which side I put the batting. So I put my batting on my top side. So I'm going to put my batting layer 
my batting strip on top as well. Get this pinned up for you. So how many people have experimented? There's a lot of different types of quilt as you go. Um, techniques and patterns. Sometimes you make quilt blocks and then you um, connect those quilt blocks. And on the back side, you would put a, um, a strip of fabric that would cover up your seam. Um, they're a good way if you don't have a lot of space or maybe even a machine with a big, big bed um, to sew a bigger project in small pieces. All right. Once again, because, you know, live TV and everything, I want to make sure that I have fall side and Halloween side together. And I'm going to sew again. And I'm just using some regular sewing thread in my top and my bobbin. And again, press this out. Now, if I was not sewing on camera, I would have my iron um, up and I would just give this a, a light little press with my iron. But I think I can manage to uh, work on this without ironing it, just doing some finger pressing. And seems as if I just dropped a clip or two. Now, if you would like to add a bit of quilting, you know, this is all going to stay together. It's not like the batting can shift or anything, but an option is to go ahead and do a stitch down each strip before you join the next strip. And that's one option. You could, of course, quilt it afterwards, but that's, that's just one option. And I, I have some... Um, pretty variegated thread here. Um, however, hmm, well, I really should change my bobbin. You know what? I'm going to just show you what I mean, and then I'm not going to worry about the fact that it's not going to match so well. <laughs> so here, I may want to switch feet. And I'm going to switch over to my open toe foot. Now this foot, let me put it on fabric so you can see it a little bit better. This happens to be for my IDF, my integrated dual feed. That means I don't have to put a walking foot on my machine to make this project. Um, that's a built-in feature on our Designer Epic 2 and our Epic 95Q. They both have this wonderful feature. However, you can put a walking foot on any machine and uh, still have great results. So I'm going to use my open toe foot because that's going to make it very easy for me to see where I'm stitching. And I want to use uh, my needle positions to actually select where, once again, I'm not sitting in front of my machine, so let me get that connected and re-engage my IDF. All right. Now... I could use any number of different feet to do this. I think it'll show up pretty good on camera. I'm going to try to get you zoomed in a bit more. Okay. And I'm just rest, resting the edge of this open toe foot against that seam. It's a pretty nice seam. Makes it easy to do. And I will elongate my stitch just making it about a three. And I'm moving my needle position over. So many sewing machines have multiple needle positions. I have 37 needle positions on my machine. Some machines have 29, some have three. Um, but whatever you have, you can make use of it. And then as I lower my needle, I think I want to come back one or two clicks. There we go. I can make sure that I'm running that toe against the edge of my fabric. Oops, that helps to start on fabric. There we go. 
It helps to not be in reverse. My goodness. It's live TV, folks. And yes, I did stab myself with a pin, so hopefully it will bleed out all over everything. There you go. I think you can see the effect that you can do some nice stitching to enhance your project. And, you know, uh, you know, the quilt police are not going to come and, and say, oops, you did that wrong. Uh, you need to do it this way. Um, you can simply um, do any stitch you like. It can be a decorative stitch. It could be a simple zigzag. It can be a straight stitch. So whatever your favorite stitch is, please use it. Our machines come with so many stitches um, that... Um, you know, we need to make use of those stitches. We need to find a reason to use those stitches. Alrighty. Let me check on your questions while I get the next uh, things. So I'm getting a message from our helpers. And by the way, I forgot to say thank you to our helpers um, that help keep all of this going. And they, um, Amy and Meredith are in the background today. And they're telling me I'm getting some camera flicking. So I'm just going to take a minute to double check a cable connection. I apologize for that. I didn't realize that was happening. Let me check that out. Hmm. Okay. Yep. It's a little flickery. Well, Amy, I am not sure. What else? Let's hope that that stays stays with us. Now, I'm I'm gonna actually I'll switch cameras is what I'll do. However, before I switch cameras, let me do a little setup because I have space here that I can do that setup and. Show you the next step because we can do this exact same thing on the serger and i want to show you how easy that is to do so once again i can choose what my next strip can be i could use the same fabric if i wanted to keep you want to be um very orderly you can keep kind of like that it really does frame that print nicely doesn't it okay um, and Put my batting on top and underneath I'm going to use my a, a purple print for my Halloween so let's get this all situated and because I'm going to take you over to the serger I am NOT putting those pins in the same direction I'm going to keep those pins out of my way I'll come back to you in just a minute here and show you how I prefer my pins or my clips for serging. The clips are pretty hard to run over on your serger, so I really like those. They kind of get in your way. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay. And let me do some trimming for that side. And Come over to this side. Again, I'm making this just for a demo, so I know I did top stitch on both sides. Um, but that's really going to be okay um, for me. When I make some more, I will do it correctly. Let's see here. We've got strip. Make sure I have the right fabric on the right side. Like I said, you know, live TV, things can happen. And... My batting strip. See, I'm just kind of centering that strip on my fabric. There we go. Put that in place. And here I have a pin. So I'm going to move that. Well, I'm going to need to put my Halloween fabric on the back side of it yet. So I will readjust that pin in just a moment. And So if you surge or um, overlock with pins, 
my recommendation is to put those pins parallel because the serger foot is going to be right along here. And if the pin is not in the path of the foot, but off to the left, you will not run into it. Okay. All righty. So I think we are set up and we'll flip cameras and there we go. Now we're on our serger. So I already, I already, and I see we have flickering again. I sincerely apologize. I, every connection is tight. I've already set up for a four thread overlock. Could you do this with a three thread? Sure. You could do it with a three thread. That would work as well. And the, the, the real thing on creating a project like this using your serger is you want a consistency of the stitch width. Since we don't have stitch width control on a serger, we can only adjust that by our cutting width and by our needle position. So I am using um, a four thread stitch and I'm going to follow me bring you back out just a little bit. So this focused on the needle. There we go. I have this set up, so I'm going to run my serger blade right along the strip, my fabric strip. Remember, I have my batting set back just a little bit. Take my clips out as I go. that little thread cutter and you see that you can get the same results with the sewing machine or the serger so that makes it very quick and easy let me go ahead and do one more side for you Sure I didn't have any pins in the way. All righty. So let's get you. I can step this back a bit for you. You can see now that we have framed our piece on each side. So it, it doesn't have to match, you know, all the way around. It doesn't have to be consistent. It can be a scrappy look or it can be a more um, traditional look. Your choice. All right. Let me come back over to you. So let me, sorry about that. Don't mean to give anybody motion sickness. All right, here I am. Sorry, I turned around and I wasn't here. You can see that a lot better on this camera because this camera's not quite so intense, um, how that works. So you would continue adding strips all the way around. So I might take um, my sunflower strip and put it next and then repeat um, one of my strips on the back. I'd probably put my purple going horizontal and you just keep building and building and building. If you reach a particular width that you like. Let me grab my placemat here. Switch, switch sides for you. If you've if you've reached a particular width that you like, but you want it longer because you want to make this into a table runner, you can just keep adding pieces on to each end. You just you don't have to go around the square every time. Get, you know, let's say you want this to be 15 or 18 inches wide as your table runner, then just keep adding pieces onto the end. And that's how you just make it as long as you like. Okay. All right. When you get uh, uh, the piece finished, 
Then you can bind the edge. You can use a quilt binder attachment to do that. Um, you could use some pre-made bias, um, just miter your corners um, so that they look nice. Um, you could also finish it with a very pretty decorative three thread overlap stitch um, and just do a with a nice heavy thread um, such as the woolly nylon thread or some of the specialty serger threads that you might find at your local dealer such as the um, decor six or the pearl crown rayon that they sell um, for sergers and make a beautiful finish all the way around the outside edge and if you don't want to turn corners on a serger and just round these a little bit you can just take a um, like a juice glass or something and lay it on, trace around and just serge a gentle corner, a gentle curve rather. And then you don't have to turn corners on the serger. So that's a good way to do that. Now, let's say that you want to do something a little bit different for your pieces. And since we have a little bit of time left, I have something prepared for you. Let me change my thread color here. I don't think that uh, beige sewing thread is going to show up so well for you. You can customize your strips around your um, project. So if you have plain solid fabrics you want to use, perhaps they match really nicely. Um, with another print you have. It's my automatic needle threader. I just love my automatic needle threader. I'm going to move my clips out of the way for you. And I have threaded up with some nice bright orange fabric. And you see my little lime green strips over here. They look, they go really well with my spider fabric that I have for my placemat. Where is that spider fabric here? So there's my spider fabric and here's some nice lime green strips of fabric. So I can decorate my own fabric. You know, maybe I couldn't find a print that I really liked. So I'm going to use one of my many decorative stitches on the machine to do some fun embellishment and I'm going to just look for what am I going to look for boy I have so many to choose from and some of them take a little longer than others to stitch but I know that um, you can explore your decorative stitches kind of like this one and let me just grab the recommended foot. I I know you can't see my screen, but I grabbed a stitch that's um, made of X's and they kind of just go left and right and repeated around and around. And it's recommending because it is a wider stitch um, to go ahead and use my S foot as opposed to my open toe foot. Okay. So you can see just when I put them side by side, let me lower that and bring you in closer. There we go. You can see how much wider the S foot is than the open toe foot. Okay. My dream would be to have a clear S foot. If anyone out there is listening who wants to invent that for me, I'd be real happy with a clear S foot. So that's on my wish list. I'm going to turn on my um, sew it, my laser sewing guidance. because Again, this is a wider stitch and I want to try to keep my um, my stitching straight. So I have done a press. I folded my strip in half and pressed it. Uh, you could also use a water soluble marker or an air erasable marker or um, one of the friction pens that goes away with heat. I just chose to just press a crease in there because I think the crease shows up pretty decent for you on camera. And I am lining up my laser in the center position. I'm going to take a moment to lower my foot and engage my needle down. What that will do is that will anchor this while I get myself positioned. And again, remember, unlike you, I'm not sewing in the proper ergonomic fashion. I'm sewing off to the side of my machine. Now, 
for a decorative stitch, I typically would put in a lighter weight bobbin thread. It gives a nice um, look to any decorative stitch. And my machine is actually recommending that I do a little bit of stabilizer. So I just have a tearaway stabilizer that I can remove afterwards. I could use, um, I don't really want to use a cutaway because I don't want to add that bulk to my project. But I could use a wash away if I wanted to take the time to wash that out. Um, but I find like the lighter weight tearaways work really well for this. And I'm going to use my start stop button on the top of my machine rather than my foot control to sew. Because you do get a better stitch when you sew consistently. It's a lot like getting really good gas mileage on your car if you use your cruise control. Well, you're going to get very consistent, even feeding when you use your start stop button or that button that kind of looks like a play button. It has the um, triangle and the rectangle um, and the universal sign for start and stop. So do you see that my laser I've, goes a little bit off to the right right now and now it's back to center and now it's going to move left. I'm keeping that laser light running parallel, meaning right next to my marked line or my fold line in this case. So that is how I use the, the laser sewing guidance to keep my decorative stitch running down the center of the strip. So we'll just do a little bit more here. And I'll show you a couple other fun options. I'm going to finish off this. So I'm going to actually touch my pattern stop. My pattern stop lets me finish out the repeat of the stitch so I can um, have a nice clean finish not stopping partly through the stitch. And you can see how nice that would be to add into my project. Oops, there we go. Now you can see it. All right, so you can create your own decorative strips. Since we do have a little bit of time, I want to uh, take a moment and show you um, some of our other options for decorative stitches. Let's see if I can find the one I want. There are so many choices here. All right, this one is a little cat, okay? And it is in our Omni Motion stitches. I think it might be appropriate for Halloween. Now, I would practice this one, but I'm going to be brave and just go for it with you guys on camera. Um, again, my laser um, sewing guidance will be of most help on this. And my stitch is actually going to start down on the base of the cat. So I'm going to move my guidance. Oops, wrong way. Move my laser up a few clicks just because I want to get a better chance at practicing this. So what I would do is I would practice this on a scrap of fabric and measure out where I want to start. It'll make sense once I do one. Let me just do a single cat for you. Show you what I mean. It doesn't matter if my laser is not the center, I'm still using it as a guide. And I just did one repeat for you so I can better explain what I'm going to do. So this stitch starts here. You can see where my thread tail is. It actually doesn't start in the center. It starts below a little bit. So what I did is I estimated, I did a pretty good job, but you know, after a while you get used to what you have on your machine and I move my laser over so I can still follow my fold, but I know that my needle's gonna start a little bit further to the left. So that's on my screen. There's a little black dot. I'll move my um, camera in just a moment and show you how that little black dot helps me determine where to start. Just do a couple more kitties. 
again, a great way to use those decorative stitches and to embellish your projects. And once again, just please be kind. I'm not sewing at my straightest because I'm kind of off to the side again. I'm going to finish this one repeat. I love this function that it lets you finish off the repeat you're on so you don't end up with a cat with no tail. All right, there we go. And I kind of am going uphill for you. Let me turn that off so it's on your way. There you go. And we have a number of different holiday type stitches. So if you're looking for something that's um, more for fall, we have some leaves. Uh, winter time, we have some stars, a snowman, some bells, candles, um, even little bits of fern and things. So those are some fun stitches in the in the K menu. K as in Kathy, they are on the motion stitches. And I can come over here without making me too dizzy. Let's just see my screen. Oh, it's so bright. I'm sorry. Challenging to see, but I'm in my K menu Omni Motions stitch number 53 is the cat. And when I choose any stitch and I'm at the beginning of the stitch, there is a black dot here and that indicates where that stitch is going to start. So I knew that being a side motion stitch or an omni motion, a multi motion stitch, that it's going to start off to the left where that dot is and then work its way up and down, back down to a line to do the next count. Okay. Unlike this omni motion stitch here, which is our little circles, it starts right in the middle. Okay. You can see that dot here. Um, this, once you know this exists, boy, does it make your life easier. Um, so, um, you can do that, um, to help guide you. Let me just go to a, uh, very traditional decorative stitch of some sort. Here's our Greek key. Again, a very traditional stitch. You can see that dot is in the middle. So you know where that stitch is going to start. We slip over to this little, um, layered curve. It's again, starts off to the left. So. That will um, hopefully make your sewing easier to know where that's going to start to sew. Okay, so let me just get you back over here so you can see something more interesting. And I'm gonna come over and check on our questions. Um, let's see. Um, I have a request to show how I am ending the stitch right at the end like I did. Absolutely, I will happily go back and show you that because it's a wonderful technique. Also can be used um, as I used it first to sew just one cat. So if you wanted to, um, you certainly could do that. So I'm going to go back to that same stitch menu and I will choose, um, I guess I will choose the cat again. Why not? Cats are Good for Halloween. And I may have, let's see here. Yep, you can, let me give you a slightly better view. Okay, I'm trying to see if I unthreaded my needle. I know I caught the thread. All right. So, on the head of my machine, I have a button that's marked stop, just S-T-O-P. This button on the left is my start stop or my, um, we used to call it a run button, um, a play button. This is what makes my machine start and stop sewing. The stop function is what allows me to finish any stitch repeat. It doesn't even matter if it's a straight stitch or not. So let me come back down here to a part of my, um, fabric I haven't used yet. Line up my laser. I want to make sure I use my needle down. That That's an extra hand to hold my fabric in place. And so I'm going to be using my start stop to sew with. And you should be able to see my needle. And I'm going to go ahead and just sew. 
I'm just going to sew along here. And it's kind of finishing up one cat, moving on to the next cat. I'm like, well, I think maybe I want three cats here. So I'm stitching my third cat. While I'm stitching, I can go ahead and touch the stop button, which I just did up at the top. And it lit up. And it stopped at the end of that stitch repeat. I'm going to use my thread cutter, my little represented by my little scissors. And you can see that it finished that cat perfectly at the end of the stitch. Okay, so that's how that works. And we have that functionality on many of our machines. Many of our sewing only machines also have that same functionality. I'm having that stop function. So I believe it starts, I know it's on our Opal 690Q. Um, I believe it's on um, all of our electronic machines. I can give you an uh, answer on that in just a moment here. And I'm going to get you off that flickering camera. Hopefully this will be a little bit better for you. There we go. All right. So once again, um, here's our little cats and this first cat here is the one I just did single. So if you want just one kitty cat, not connected to the others, you can just do a single one. Just turn your stop on that single stop button before you get going with your other, um, with sewing it so that you have one on screen and it will show you just one on screen. Alrighty, so um, I believe that I am at the end of my um, presentation today. Um, I, if you have any other last minute questions, I'm happy uh, to answer those. I know that um, Amy and Meredith popped those into the chat for me um, so that I can see them. And we do monitor our Facebook Lives and YouTube um, viewings for about a week or so afterwards. So if you do have questions, um, feel free to still put those in and we will monitor those and give you a response right on that um, page. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I don't see anything else popping into my chat. Thanks for spending some time with me, whether you were here live and we just absolutely love a live audience or whether you watch this recorded. Um, just a couple things. Um, our next um, Facebook Live for MySonet, that's our MySonet software, is going to be next week on Wednesday the 11th. And you get to have me, you, yours truly, again next week um, talking about fonts. And we're going to go a little bit beyond the basics on fonts and talk about how to um, really change them up. It's still very, very easy. Everything that I'm going to do next week, you can do in the silver, the gold, or the platinum level. So if you have that wonderful um, silver program, you can certainly join us for more information about fonts. We're going to talk about how to alter the density of a font so that you can sew a little font, a small size font out even better. How to sew um, a font that's bigger out by changing um, maybe from a satin stitch to a fill pattern, um, how to get a little more creative with using your font. So um, it's not going to be difficult, but it's a tiny bit more than the basics. So I hope you'll join me um, for that next week on the uh, October the 11th. Again, same time. Um, that will be two o'clock central and then just convert it for your time zone. Okay. Alrighty. Have a great day, everyone. And we'll see you next